Okay, so the first thing is the uh, end of the bars, how it fits onto the car on Titans. Uh, there's a little flap that spins around on the end here, and inside is a, a little bolt, and initially this bit is, is sort of loose at the end here. And you tighten it using this uh, special key here, um, which is just basically a torque wrench, um, except that the, the end of it has got some sort of uneven grooves in it that uh, act a bit like a key, so each one I believe is unique. Um, and you on it, you have to line it up properly, there's a little arrow that you might be able to see on the end there, um, and there's a little arrow on this bolt inside, and you, you line the two things up, and then you tighten it, and eventually it'll start clamping against the side of the car. Um, when it starts to reach the right level of tightness, the uh, bolt has some little markings on it, um, little arrows here, which as the level of tightness uh, gets to the right tension, um, those two arrows will gradually line up and show you've got six newton meters of tension, which is the right amount for the car. So at that point, when it reaches that point where you turn the handle, you stop and you're at the right level of tension. Okay, now when it comes to fitting the cycle carrier onto the bar, there's a little cap on the end of the bar, and you can see there's a little sort of slot T-shaped groove on there that the cycle carrier slots into. Now the T-shaped groove into that slots these little square metal plates that are on the cycle carrier itself. Um, they can jiggle around a bit and line up. Um, and those are quite loose to start with, but they're tensioned by pushing these little clamps. There's one on this side and one on this side. And when they're pushed down like that, then it pulls the plate in on the back there tight against the, the T-groove. Okay, once you've uh, slotted the cycle carrier onto the uh, T-bars, you can close the little flaps at the end here, the little covers, and just uh, protect the end. And then there's the three clamps, because there's two plates at the front and uh, one at the rear. The, the two on the side you're looking at just close normally, so they just uh, push down like that, and that clamps the plate, and this one the same, push it down, and it holds it tightly on the roof bar, like that. Okay, now the uh, last one on this side is um, basically works in the same way. It's a clamp that pushes the T-thing in. But the um, clever bit is this little plate here that's attached to the arm that controls the bicycle, uh, that fixes the bicycle frame. So as you move the bicycle frame thing, you can see that this little plate moves around in here and uh, goes backwards and forwards. And that engages with a this little edge on the uh, clip here to hold it down. So basically this clip can only be pushed down all the way when this arm is in this position, pushing in that direction. When the uh, plate is then pushed down and then the arm swings back up, if it's in any position beyond there, that little plate covers those uh, edges there and stops you lifting the, the clamp. Um, and that works all the way through from forward to backwards. Um, so the, the plate can't be lifted except when I push it all the way forward like this. And then suddenly, oops, quite stiff, uh, it releases again. Okay, to show how the bicycle actually goes in it, um, the bit with the arm on the, the bracket there goes, um, on the carrier, goes with the front wheel, and the, the flat bit goes towards the rear wheel and you uh, bump the bike in there like that. Um, once it's in, there are some straps at the bottom which we'll put on at the end. Um, but to actually secure the bike, you uh, bring this so First thing you should do is put the clamp down on the far side that we just talked about. And then bring the uh, squeaky arm up and then slide this clamp so that it clamps the tube there. And this um, clamp can be tightened to a bit different size frame. So the frame of this bike is quite a thin one. If you had a sort of mountain bike with a big chunky frame, then uh, that would be fatter. You can move this clamp up or down, so I can, depending on the angle and shape of the bike, I can clamp it further down, higher up, however I want to clamp it. Once it's in there, that's fairly sturdy. The uh, little straps just uh, hold the wheels down on the frame. Um, so, as 
like little straps that poke through the spokes here, push through onto these little clips and just hold the wheels down in the carrier and the same on the front there. And once it's all done, then the, the bike is pretty solidly fixed in the carrier. Okay, so uh, once you've put the bike into the uh, carrier and you've uh, tightened the clamp around the tube here, you lock the whole thing in one place only, which is this key here. Um, once you do that, then this clamp here can't be undone, which means this swinging arm that grabs the tube here is that prevents the jaws from opening, um, which means the bike is fully clamped in here and so it can't be undone and the bike removed. But also, um, because the arm can't be swung forwards um, all the way, that prevents you from undoing the uh, clamp that I spoke about earlier that locks it into the roof bars themselves. So not only does it prevent you from uh, removing the bike, it also stops you removing the whole carrier as well because you can't release the clamp at the bottom that holds it to the bars. Okay, the other thing that's quite clever is uh, when you don't have a bike on the, the carrier, you can still lock it and stop it being stolen. Um, and that works by using this little uh, sort of knobble down here with a, a cutout in it. Um, when you don't have a bike on it, you push the arm down like this and you line up this little hole in the uh, clamp uh, with that little knobble. And when that's positioned over the top, um, and you close the jaws, you can see a little uh, little sort of thing sort of pushes across the hole which fits into that cutout in the knobble. So if I push that down and fit it over there and tighten the clamp, then the clamp itself is locked onto the knobble and obviously if I was to turn the key then that prevents that from being undone. That also prevents the clamp and arm being pushed up and of course that also means that the clamp on the other side that holds it onto the bars also can't be raised because the arm's in the position where everything's locked. So I think that's everything. I hope that uh, explains everything to you. Um, any questions let me know. Uh, I think it's quite a cleverly designed system, certainly better than the Thule one that I've got for my new car. Thank you.